Hey, it's uh, episode 492 of the Gratu Orloff television program. Uh, we're here from uh, Gratuville, Texas. It's February 3rd, 2022, the day the music died. And not this day, actually, February 3rd, 1959. Remembering that day, the great love for Buddy Holly and Richie Valens and Big Bop and the Big Bopper. And uh, anyway, so today we're getting some snow. Now, last February I got all excited and went live and showed you the snow and then the power, and it was all exciting until the power went off for 24 hours and it was zero degrees outside and it, that, that was pretty bad. But this is pretty cool. I always like snow. I know this is nothing for some of you guys up north that are probably buried in several feet of snow. But underneath the snow is some uh, nice ice. It was sleeting all last night, and now it's snowing on top of that. It's, uh, I think, 22 degrees out here. Um, just thought I'd uh, show you the winter wonderland. I hear the sounds of some kids having fun. This branch is getting a little low, being weighed down by the ice. Well, let's take a look at what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I missed uh, Graphic Man's Four Color Fossils show last night. I, I got home late. And actually, I kind of forgot it was Wednesday uh, night. Wow. So, pretty cool. Let's monitor how the snow goes during the broadcast. Um, anyway, am I even recording? Well, yes, I am. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, head on in. I've been taking uh, some pictures down and everything to try to make the house uh, look more normal for normie type people because uh, looks like we're going to be uh, selling this uh, building, the Gratu Orloff International Building of Trade and uh, and uh, possibly uh, moving to a little bit bigger facilities hopefully soon. So, um, I've been uh, taking some pictures down, trying to make things look more normal for normal idiots that like things to look normal. Um, but we can go on up to the seventh floor to one of the comic book rooms if you'd like. Uh, hold on. Uh, let's see. What do I need to do here? Okay. Let's go in the elevator here um, and uh, go on up to the seventh floor. This is the uh, elevator room. Uh, and I also store some uh, DVDs here in the elevator room. So, uh, there's an alien egg here in the elevator. Yeah, I can barely fit in the elevator. But anyway, let's, uh, let's uh, punch in uh, floor seven here. Okay, going up.
Okay, here we are, floor seven, the Grotu Orloff International Building of Trade. <sighs> God damn it. <clears throat> A lot of stuff I gotta do up here. Let's see. One thing I've gotta do is empty out the garage. So I can uh, start my shit and putting stuff out there. Um, maybe I should start taking down the Beatles. They've been up here a long time. Look at the dust there on John Lennon. And old uh, Smokey the Bear. Probably the Playboy centerfolds need to be taken down. Some of this stuff needs to be boxed up. I imagine some people could be offended by some of these uh, things on the wall, possibly. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. I was just thinking about Deputy Dog this morning and how much I love Deputy Dog. Also, looking at the camera, I realized how incredibly fat I am. I just weighed myself 239 pounds. So I'm, I'm, and I just got a little phone message reminding me to pick up my high blood pressure medicine from Walgreens. So my mission, uh, you guys are going to need to hold me to all of this because you're going to watch me take this shit down. Some of you don't believe I can do it, but you may not realize that I used to be an army brat. And how many times did we move? Let's see, we moved from San Antonio to Germany. Then we moved from Germany to another place in Germany. Then we moved from Germany to Virginia, Virginia to San Antonio. I'm looking down at my hands. San Antonio to Washington State to Tacoma, and then here to Gratuville. That's six times I moved. Um, oh, and then I moved all my stuff in the mid '90s to uh, Longview, Texas. So that seven times and then I had to then I moved back to Gratuville so that's eight times in my life that I've moved my whole collection but of course some of those were in the when I was very very young so I didn't have quite I hadn't amassed all of this stuff that yet then um ah shit so um 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 so some of the episodes coming up are just going to be, uh, they'll probably be boring to some of you because I'm just going to be moving stuff. So it might be uh, nightmarish to you. Um, okay, what am I doing here? Okay. Well, yeah. So I got to start somewhere. I guess I could take some of these uh, autograph pictures down. There's a Meg White. Here's Butch Patrick. I don't think the average normal person would understand why these are thumbtacked to the doors of uh, in the closet. So those two thumbtacks, put them here. It's an autograph picture of June Wilkinson. So I'll take that down. See, I'm I'm showing my commitment to you guys, uh, so you can actually see that I'm doing stuff here. stack this uh, shiza let's take it down this time I'm gonna take the stairs down instead of the elevator I was fooling you earlier there is no elevator in fact this is a two-story house I've been telling you that it's a seven-story building for two and a half years and some of you have believed it <laughs> but it actually isn't Hey, if any of you are interested in moving to Gratuville, you could buy this house and then we wouldn't have to even deal with a real estate agent. Wouldn't that be groovy? But Drew, the watchdog, does not come with the sale of the house. All right. So what else do I got to do here? Oh, the governor's giving a winter storm update. Yeah. Well, I can get an update myself. Let's go see how it's doing now. Let's see. I can't. Ooh, it's still snowing. Look at that. Anyway, I want to 
I'll lose weight so I can get off this blood pressure medicine. Then I won't have to go to these damn doctors because I don't. I, I, it's not. I don't know if I trust. I'm still, uh, I don't know if I trust them anymore. But we won't talk about that. Speaking of censorship, I was thinking maybe we should move, or maybe I should move my uh, my uh, show to like uh, Rumble or. What is it called? Truth Social, when it starts. Because there probably won't be a lot of comic book shows there. Although this isn't really a comic book show. I keep saying that, but all I talk about is comic books. Uh, but I really want to uh, make this a uh, pop culture show. Because I have a lot more interest than just comics. And I want to talk about other stuff. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, uh, there's no uh, there's no getting in the car and going anywhere the next couple of days. This weather's going to be lasting, so I'm just going to be working in the house. <clears throat> what are things I can do? See, I don't know. I mean, what what would be offensive to a normal person looking at this house? I think it's just that there's so much stuff they can't get a sense of what uh, where the house begins, and so. I probably need to take the Revenge of the Creature poster down. I think the stool, the, I've got a, why did I come downstairs again? <sighs> Let's see what the governor is saying. I wonder if this is statewide. We've got a governor that, that, uh, does, he's in a wheelchair like FDR. I think he stepped on a landmine or something. Not available because of maintenance operations during the course of the winter storm. This year, more generators are online because guy. they were required to do maintenance either before or after a winter season. Also, more natural gas facilities are designated as critical infrastructure infrastructure to ensure... You better not be telling us they're going to turn off our power again, man. That was not cool. facilities were designated as critical infrastructure. As of now, more than 2,900 of those facilities are designated as critical infrastructure. Also, unlike last year, some generators that uh, use... He's telling us that things are better than last year, but if uh, President Brandon wants to uh, ask his Chinese masters to pull the switch on our power grid, it'll all go down. Of course, he doesn't ask anybody. They tell him what to do. Not that I'm a, I believe in conspiracy theories or anything. Uh, let's see. I can do some bagging and boarding. Well, uh, I got some bags and boards yesterday. Let's see. That's what I need to take upstairs. These bags and boards. Yeah, I got quite a job ahead of me, and, and uh, I'll do it. Oh, I got this uh, this thing. Show it to you. This uh, I bought this Superman Masterpiece Edition box from a homeless gentleman, and. Uh, It's got a replica of Superman number one in a book and a statue, which I've already put upstairs. Um, there's this guy that comes around that's a, that loves comics and, and paints. He paints replicas of old comic covers, but he is 100% homeless and lives in his car. But he's got collectibles in his car, and sometimes he'll say, Hey, you want to buy this? I'm trying to step over the doggy barrier that keeps the dog from going upstairs and annoying the cats. Hold on. So anyway, I'll say, hey, how would you like to buy this 
slabbed issue of Frankenstein from 1954 or something. I don't like slabbed books, but I bought it from him because I love Frankenstein. And I thought it would go well in my Frankenstein display. So I bought that from him, and then I bought that Masterpiece Edition. What else did I get from him? Uh, uh, Marvel Masterworks of Venus, the, the 50s superheroine. And, uh, oh, I bought this painting from him here. That, uh, this uh, kind of amateur is painting of uh, Hulk 121, but I thought it was cool. So... Anyway, that's what I've purchased from him. But, man, when it's 22 degrees outside, I don't know where he is, where he's taking shelter. Um, he was uh, his car in a parking garage, he was telling me the other night. of some medical center and like several squad cars, like two or three squad cars came up and woke him up. And they were all back away from the car because they were scared of him and uh, he was kind of irritated he says hey, I'm a veteran why are you bothering me and they told him he cannot sleep there in that parking garage of course the part of the story I didn't tell you is that he apparently he has to uh, shit that fucking Wizard of Oz commercial gets me every time just because those that little I accidentally I'm record so I recorded all this stuff, drive-in intermission stuff, and then YouTube puts their little commercials in between. And that commercial, I think that'll get me a copyright strike just from that one second of those stupid dwarfs singing. Uh, I'll have to see the wizard. <sighs> Shit. Anyway, these cops pull up, and he's uh, sleeping in his car. But he says, well, I have to sleep uh, nude. I, have, I can't sleep. <laughs> so they, were, they found this naked guy in a car in a parking garage. Of course, they, were, they brought in backup, man. He says, oh, i got to get my clothes on. Hold on a second. Anyway, so. But I don't mean to belittle him for his homelessness, and I hope he's okay in this weather. I just... I'm not trying to mock him, I'm just saying that I bought several collectibles lately from a guy that sleeps naked in his car. It's kind of a, kind of disturbing now to think that these objects used to be in the car with a naked man. But who knows where any of our collectibles used to be? All these comics that you own, that you bought, like, who owned them? I mean, what kind of people own these books and these toys were they in John Wayne Gacy's house or something I'll show you. that's what I was going to do I was going to show you that Superman yeah I got a lot of work ahead of me um, yeah there's the Superman you see that there it was designed by Alex Ross it's pretty damn cool it looks like it's from that time period what else is new around here? Seems like something else is new. Can't remember. Um, gotta, gotta box all this shit and stuff up. God damn, what was that? Oh, my shoelace just came untied. That's it disaster waiting to happen. Uh, the snow's not as heavy as it was. Let's see what's going on out there. Something else, huh? Okay. Got to tie my shoelace. I'm about to have an accident. 
accident here. God, you almost <laughs> you just did. Okay. This is Drew the dog. Drew, say hi to the people on the television program. Let me, oh shit. Hold on, I'm trying to get something to organize here. Okay. Let's see now. Drew, would you, would you like to go see the snow, Drew? I'm gonna take Drew out, I think. I think she's seen much snow in her uh, in her time. <sighs> Let's see what's on YouTube here. Hate it or love it, X Force 116, Mike Allred and Peter Milligan. That's that cartoonist kayfabe show talking about when X Force changed from a uh, 90s looking Rob Liefeld looking comic to uh, the Mike Allred comic and that was I, I love that a lot of people hated it and then, then yesterday they they brought that comic back called X Solent or something like that anyway let's uh, find the leash there it is Ugh. I think I'm going to have to cut out. My wife's decided she's only going to have one Coca-Cola every Sunday. Because it's hard to quit those things. And I think that's probably 80% of what's making me fat. Come on, Drew. We're going outside. She may not like it. Let's take a look. Oh, she's acting crazy. Come on, Drew. Let's go make some yellow snow, man. Got my pooper scooper, so you can be a good citizen. Okay, she's trying to figure out what this stuff is. What do you think, Drew? You want to investigate this? Ooh, uh, uh, there, there's a lot of snow. That's the snow blowing off the roof. Liking this. I think she, she's indicating she wants to go back in. You don't like it, huh? She's um she's not a Yankee dog. She does not like snow. Okay, get me back inside, man. Well, so I wonder what interesting things will happen today in the news. Yesterday, the head of CNN quit. And uh, what else has been going on? A lot, of, uh, a lot of big events are supposed to be happening over the next week. All right. Let's see. Oh, I took this picture down of uh, Mary Pickford. Isn't that beautiful?
that might offend normal people. You know. uh, okay. bought a few comics yesterday. Um, we had some Mediterranean food last night and now the kitchen smells very different. house or something. I got some fruit yesterday because I knew we might get a housebound for a couple of days. Let's see. Checking on the snow. Still some pretty big flakes coming down, but not as many as before. these pictures I'm taking down I need to put them into the garage for the time being and into the converted room in half of the garage to create the illusion that this house is bigger I guess or to be less distracting I guess Now the show can begin. Yeah, okay guys. Welcome back to the Grotto Show. It's episode 492. Here in the year of our Lord 2022. February 3rd. God damn it, 2022. Now, on with the show. The day the music died. Uh, hey, how about that Neil uh, Young? Sir, uh, may I help you? Uh, I'd like two of those, please. Hot dogs? Yes, sir. And three I actually of like Neil Young's music, but it's it's funny how the that generation of uh, Fighting against the establishment and down with the man are uh, right on board with it now. Some of them. But apparently, Joni Mitchell is right with him. And now, this morning, the all Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young, all of them got together to all say they disapprove of Joe Rogan. Because Joe Rogan is pretty cool and he's very open minded and he's fair and he's. He's not a nut. He just interviews people of all types and lets them talk. But apparently that's not good. And uh, so they're all demanding that their music be pulled off Spotify or as long as Joe Rogan's there. And they got Joe Rogan in a 20, in a $20 million a year, five-year contract. So 
if they just fire him, they may have to pay him $100 million for nothing. So, and he's probably the biggest thing on that network, honestly. So, it's all, all insanity. The, the guys in the 60s that seem to be uh, more rational are people like... Uh, well, Mick Jagger's right with, there with them. He's not threatening uh, Spotify, but but he's put out some songs uh, that indicate his position. Uh, uh, Van Morrison and uh, Eric Clapton. I know they're on the uh, the uh, the winning side. Anyway, we don't talk about politics here on the Grudge World Life Show at all, so let's not do that. Let's see what I got here. All right, so I got bags and boards, and boards and bags, and so let's start. Well, oh, there's a bright light out there, man. You want my Let me do something to prove that I'm uh, By attending your place of worship, right? I'm serious. I'll take some pictures down off the wall. I got this at the dollar store. My wife hates it even though I, I turned it into something cool. I think it's something cool, but she doesn't these signs she says are the worst you know, the scourge of the earth. Our family is blessed, and then I put the monsters into it. I thought that would make it funny, but And this one, family is everything. I really should have put a picture of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family in it instead of the, the Bride of Frankenstein or Frankenstein's wedding. So that's that. Here's a autographed picture of Gene Summers. But some of these modern photographs, it's really bad. They don't put them in the fixer or the fixing solution long enough, and then the you get an autograph picture, and then a few years later, the picture starts to fade away. So I went out to a, a place and uh, quickly made a, a slick copy of the photograph before the picture of Gene Summers just disappeared. But he already he's turning a little bit. Uh, see how he's kind of fading. Anyway, it's made out to myself and my wife. Uh, many thanks, 2013. Rock on, because I found some uh, ma a mass uh, acetate it's like a one-of-a-kind uh, record that was uh, you could record straight to a record and they called them acetates and it was a one-of-a-kind acetate just a few streets over at an estate sale of Gene Summers doing search in the coasters song and the other side was uh, I forget what ballad it was but I made recordings of it but um, you know and I swept we posted it online. Hey, we found this record, and then within a day or so, these record collecting people had gotten in touch with Gene Summers, and, and then he got in touch with us. And he says, "I want to buy that." I says, "Hell, we'll just give it to you. It's yours. I only paid a dollar for it." And uh, I, but he insisted on giving us a check for oh, a couple hundred dollars, something. Maybe it was five hundred. I don't know. I mean, I could have sold it to some record collector in Europe if I was an asshole. Although people tell me I'm an asshole, but I wouldn't be. The, I wouldn't. No one. No one offered me. But you know, I. I know I could have done that. If. But it's not right. This is something he recorded and was barely out of high school, in, in college. And uh, in order to uh, get gigs at the local Dairy Queen, he'd have a record here. This is what we sound like. So let us play at your Dairy Queen. You know. And uh, the girl that was on the record that I guess played the piano or something must have been the one that passed away and somehow the record wound up in her stuff with nothing else. It was a bunch of gospel records, everything else. But I got this one acetate that, and I don't know if he ever issued it. He, was, he said he might put it on a record, or, but he just needed it. It was very sentimental to him and to his family. And he passed away just a few months ago, unfortunately. 
But yeah, Gene Summers, uh, big rock of the lake guy. And so, uh, oh, this is the new comic I was telling you about. Oh, I gotta get that light better, don't I? Uh, this came out yesterday. It's excellent number one, so this is the follow-up to uh, that uh, X-Force, which later became X-Statics back in the early part of this century, around 2001 or something. Yes, indeed. Should I move the light or should I move myself? When you're afraid to stand up because you know the camera will show how fat you are, that's a sign that you need to lose weight, I think. And I need to lose weight, and I've realized that. And instead I'm on 40 grams of lisinopril. That's a high dosage. Instead of just losing fucking weight, which is what a doctor should tell me to do, it's like lose weight so you don't have to get on this fucking medicine. So I think that my blood pressure being so high when they injected me with a painkiller for messing with my teeth at the dentist is what caused all these pro the floaters to pop up in my eye. And so, so I gotta get my. It's just a fucking mess. Anyway, this maybe you can see it better now. Excellent. Is several alternate covers, but the others don't have art by Mike Allred. So anyway, yeah, I like this. I don't know that anyone else does because it didn't look like it was selling. Let me move closer to you. I kind of want to go look at the snow. It's like, no offense, you guys are entertaining and everything, but it doesn't snow every day. Let's see. I'm re-sleeving things. Now, um, Adam Warlock, people are speculating. I don't speculate. I just buy what I like. And I've always done that. And sometimes it pays. Oh, this has got a Mark. <laughs> not, not exactly Mark Jewelers. This is uh, The Power of Warlock, number four. In the 20 cent era, they call this picture frame or window box. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I'm one of the people that loves it. Oh, that light should be lower. How about, how about that? Okay, but anyway, my point is, oh, that's better. What is my point? Oh, I thought it would, so you look at it and say, oh, that's a Mark Jewelers variant. And apparently 5% of the print run of a comic would be Mark Jewelers, and they were sold in the PXs. But uh, this isn't a Mark Jewelers variant. I don't hear people t talking about this as much. This is a, it's, a, it's actually a jeweler, it's National Diamond Sales. I imagine it's about the same thing. And then on the front part, it's it's uh, trained for a great career as a police officer or detective. Because you know, a lot of people in the military, that's their next thing, next gig. But this has always been ironic, or not ironic, but weird, that they got this ad in a kid's comic. Thrill someone you love. So it's buying lingerie for your loved one. Lingerie diamonds and police officer uh, work. Yeah. Oh, I always like this uh, ad for the, for, uh, for the Corgi toys. They were, uh, they were these little toy cars that came from England. Yep, yep, yep. So, let's get this uh, 
it's in low grade, it's got folds. It's not my childhood copy. As a child, I would not treat books this way. So that's that. So that's issue four. Trying to make sure my whole war lord warlock collection rather. Did I say warlord a minute ago? I think I love warlord from DC. And I love Warlock from Marvel. Sometimes my adult mind slips between the two. Um, yeah, this is a this is a really nice copy, 20 cent era. Um, normally, you don't see them this white because they tend to get dirty. Comics, uh, very slick, in very nice shape. Anyway. This was, uh, well, I joined this fan club, Foom, Friends of Old Marvel. I think it was Marvel's third attempt to have a fan club. First was the Merry Marvel Marching Society, MMMS, and then they did the Marvel Mania around 1970. But Foom was the one that, you know, I was right at the right age, third, fourth grade, and so I remember I sent off to it, and, it, and I got my envelope with the Hulk's face on it. And I still have that and a little uh, membership card and a subscription to foam oh and a poster where is that that's framed in the other room but, oh vampire tales man i traced this as a kid this ad and now morbius uh, who, uh, who in third grade if someone had told me that someday morbius would be a movie i would just wouldn't have believed it of course it doesn't look like it's going to be a good movie but I, I always could be surprised. This is August of 73. So, this is 73. August of 73. This is right about the time that we were moving from Hampton, Virginia to, to back to San Antonio, Texas. And, uh, um, and, and that's when I really, uh, once we, I was in San Antonio, those years, third and fourth grade, which would have been about 1973 to 75, that's when I really awakened to superheroes. Before it was monsters and ghosts and house of mystery and uh, any kind of monsters, monster of Frankenstein, tomb of Dracula, werewolf by night. I loved all that stuff. The superheroes that came a little later. Yeah. Oh, we we're just talking about DC's Warlord, which, uh, Basically, Warlord looked like uh, looked like the Green Arrow, but he was. Uh... Oh, here's an ad where they're going to sell, like at Kmart, you could get or Remco Toys. They uh, were making toys of Arak and uh, Warlord there in the center, and uh, who's the other guy? Is that Hercules? I don't remember. Yeah, Hercules. DC had a Hercules, too. Because you can't copyright Hercules' name. I mean, they had cities named after Hercules in the ancient times. Herculaneum was wiped out by a volcano. Yeah, see, it's basically looks like the Green Arrow, but he's, uh, he's in an Edgar Rice Burroughs kind of world. He's... Uh, it's like a Green Arrow and John Carter, Warlord of Mars. If they had a baby... He would be a uh, warlord. Oh, I just watched the new episode of Peacemaker this morning. Episode 6. Um, there's some controversy in the uh, comic Tom kind of world. The people that speculate on comics. You know, what are the hot comics? And right now, I think Suicide Squad number 4. People are getting excited about that issue. It's... Uh, got William Hell 
who apparently later becomes the white dragon or some, or white something or you know I don't anyway uh, they've changed peacemaker and vigilante um, to a to a large degree in this television show this James Gunn TV show and uh, the peacemaker's father uh, is a super villain who's got a his own kind of uh, closet that opens up to uh, like a almost like a bat cave but he's a white supremacist guy and uh, he's uh, the white dragon so uh, I saw the, the the commercial for next week's episode and, and he flies and his blasts out of his I uh, have not I don't remember that character from the comics it seems like people would but apparently it seems like if there is a character in the comics that looks like that, that's the first appearance of that should be what people that are wanting to speculate should go after. Uh, because uh, it seems like, uh, but it's because he's this character in, in the uh, Peacemaker show does not have the same... Uh, um, um, uh, name uh, when he's not in costume it's, so it's, it's been changed and I don't know so some people are saying oh, I don't want to speculate on a character that's a bad guy you know that's like a very obviously incorrect views and then uh, but I don't know if people have been speculating on the vigilante comic because the vigilante is hilarious in this show I mean he's not in the comic he's very different than he is in the comic it, he looks like he does in the comic, at least the costume is pretty comic book accurate, but the character couldn't be more different. But it's wonderful because he's just this idiotic goofball, but he can actually fight and he's actually very deadly. And uh, it's like what I was saying about uh, Don Adams and Get Smart. Uh, Don Adams was a World War II veteran, so when he's handling the weapons in that Get Smart show, you, you can tell this guy is, knows what he's doing and could, you know, kill people very easily, but, you know, he's such an idiot. So someone watching the show that does not, that does not have military training wouldn't uh, pick, pick up on that. Okay, I'll take down this picture of uh, Yvonne Craig's autograph of that girl. See, I'm gonna, every time I walk into any room, I'm going to make a change in it. That's my, and here's an autograph of Martina Beswick from Thunderball. And here's a personally autographed picture from Lily St. Cyr, who I corresponded with to get photos of. And she was very nice, except she was very forgetful about sending the pictures. And then what she would remember, just, then I'd remind her, and then she'd send me extra pictures uh, to forgive her for forgive for me to forgive her for forgetting to send me the pictures and then she sent me her personal phone number in case there was ever a mix-up in the future so i don't think she was trying to rip me off it's just i think she was uh, probably a little old lady that didn't was kind of overwhelmed she put an ad in i think the movies some collector's magazine it wasn't uh, you know they used to have these tabloid magazines uh like this one that I just saw on the floor in here. Uh, there used to be magazines on every newsstand before the internet where uh, you could get collectibles. And this shit's all fucked up. There's an issue of Toy Shop from April of 1997, right? What's well, hot for 97? But then there was one for uh, movie collectors and there was one for record collectors. And uh, they, they were tabloid size. And it, I think in the movie, one she advertised that she was selling uh, uh, the autographed pictures. And so I thought, wow, well, I got to order those. And then they just never came. So I had to contact her. And she was very apologetic. Okay, I'm going, just look at the snow. Oh man, has it stopped? That sucks. I don't think it's gonna snow anymore, but what's here isn't gonna be uh, leaving for a good 48 hours because it's not gonna get above freezing.
fit night out for man nor beast. Let's see. Yeah, this uh, Elvira, Mistress of the State. Uh oh, does that mean that Elvira has come out? Uh, oh no. Uh, Joe Rogan is the new Orange Man. This is Nerdrotic. Look, we want to make a movie. Yeah, who cares? Nerdrotic.com. Oh. Oh, look at that. There's the Arwen right there in Death Rock. Oh, oh Elvira calls to remove Joe Rogan. Okay. I felt I was heartbroken a few years ago when I had to sell. We were starving. Uh, one of my my Elvira pinball machines from the 90s. But I saved my original Elvira machine here. But um, looks like Elvira has uh, this one of my idols. So apparently she's uh, she's aligned on the demonic side. But... Oh well. You gotta. Um... Yeah, well, that's kind of disappointing. This picture of Irish McCalla autograph. Let's get this down, and I'll take the thumbtack. This lobby card for Blood Feast would probably upset people, wouldn't you think? You know, see, this picture looks absolutely horrifying. If you were to see it, it said nothing so appalling in all the annals of horror, grisly and blood color. You would think, if you saw this still, like in the Monster Times or something, that's one of the most horrifying movies ever made. And then when you see the movie, you realize it's just so silly, but it's like, uh, I remember seeing in the Monster of Times a picture uh, of this girl, bloody, laying on the beach face down in Horror of Party Beach. And I thought, this movie must be just unbelievable. And it turns out it's just a goofy beach party movie with these monsters that look like they have hot dogs coming out of their mouths. But sometimes a still picture can really fool you. All right, back to the show. I am a little overwhelmed, honestly. I don't know where to start first. Um, down here. Oh. So what have you guys been up to lately? I told you I got some new comics lately. Did I show those to you? I don't think I did. They must be here. See, I don't even know what this is. I bought the first issue because it looked cool, and then I about the second issue, it's Ant. So, Ant, it just looks cool. Probably made a mistake. And I got this Lady Death yesterday. It's probably 
another mistake. It's not that I don't like new comics. I want to like new comics. I want to like new music. I'm constantly looking for comics. I'm constantly listening for new music. I don't want to... Uh, I'd like to be able to turn on the radio and hear good music. I mean, I really would. I mean, uh... Hot in here because I got this coat on. I don't know what I'm see. Part of my irritation is that I'm starving. I think it's about noon. Um, I wonder if I should walk down to, uh, oh, it's Gru the Wanderer, number 64, if you're wondering what I'm bagging here. looking at this big house that's not far from here that we might move to um, that's what I showed you in the last episode but um, hopefully we can get that if not we're looking at some a place in a man there's a house in Kentucky we kind of like and one in Iowa I don't know maybe we'll go there but I'd rather stay in in uh, Texas there's another issue of warlock I'm just going through here bagging and boarding the collection because uh, some of these books aren't bagged and boarded. And so I've got to do that. I should be putting them in my lights because these, these bags are going to look like shit within a few months, if not instantly. Here's, uh, what year is this from? 1997, I believe. This is uh, Mike Allred a few decades ago. But I don't think what I'm doing right now is, is a good use of my time, honestly. I think I need to be taking shit off the walls. So maybe I need to be doing that. Anyway, um, we'll go look at that house again. The one you saw in the last episode. My camera work was atrocious because I was kind of in a hurry and I was holding the camera down, down at my waist. And uh, next time I'll have my wife uh, photograph and then you'll see it a little bit better. Okay, let's start it up. Thank you.